know. We made our own. Hers was good. And Jerry, <laughs> let's make you the I know. host. I know. If, I, if I see one more okay. person driving around in a car, the window. All right, up. Jerry, you are the host. I'm going to pull okay. my other. And I'm leaving your meeting. Yeah. Have, Have a good night. night. Work. Yeah. Good night. Thanks, Paul. You got it? Yep. But. Yes. Turn off that music, sir. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Tim. I'm waiting for Dawn to, um, I don't know how to, to get in. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't, I don't see her. Is she just coming in on audio only? Yes, it's connecting to audio. Oh, there it is. One person waiting. Admit, okay. All right, Dawn, are you there? Yes, I'm finally here. It took me a while. <laughs> okay. All right. So, <clears throat> okay, so we have two applications tonight. The first one is 2011, which is 104 South Main Street. And uh, Dr. Wilson, do you want to explain uh, what you've done or what you're doing? Um, replacing a fence that's at the north end of my back porch. Uh, it encloses the uh, corner of that porch where the barbecue area is. And it was uh, previously a, a wooden fence matching the rest of the fencing in the yard. And it uh, basically decomposed, so I replaced it with what's there now, which is this white vinyl fence. Okay. Um, is there any uh, questions or comments? From the um, I just would like to make the comment that we have um, not had white vinyl fencing, vinyl fencing of any sort um, within the confines of the historic district. Okay. Is there any other comments? No, Tim? No. My, my question is that um, the fence has currently been installed, right? So what I see there now is what is it, is what was That is written? correct. Okay, there's nothing additional going up, Lance, right? Nope. Okay, nope. I see. It is what it is. So it's that small section of white fence that we see that's kind right. of- Right, eight foot. Uh, eight foot of fencing that faces the driveway. Right, I see. So, but no additional fencing no. like that going anywhere else. Okay, all right. Joe, do you have any comments? No, I don't have any comments. I, I, again, I wasn't absolutely sure. I had the same question that Tim had. I wasn't sure whether it, it was a proposed future change or what was there was, was the change. Um, it, it didn't look bad, but it, it, to me, I mean, it looked fine. But, but again, as you pointed out in your other email about the uh, guidelines of HARP, not necessarily aesthetics that are important. So if there's if there's a um, you know an issue related to the vinyl versus wood, I'm I'm not um, I'm not an expert on that, so I don't know. Dawn, do you have any comments? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, typically, now did you put up the original wood fence, Dr. Wilson? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, typically, vinyl fencing is not historic in nature at all. So, and we've never approved a vinyl fence before, Joy? No, we've never approved a vinyl fence before, okay. ever. And I've been sitting here for many, many years. Right. So, all right. Are there uh, any other comments or discussions? I have a question or? Sure. Um, <clears throat> is there a problem with the aesthetics or only with the fact that it's vinyl? The problem uh, historically for us has been that it is, it's the material. Um, that wood is, is preferred, vinyl does not age well. Um, it, it just isn't, isn't what would have been there. And our mission is to try to preserve as much as possible. Well, my question was simply if it was, the aesthetics are okay then, right? 
It's not the it's not just the aesthetics. It's trying to place in a different way. If it were wood with the same design, would it pass? A wood fence is oh, preferable. Does mm -hmm. it match the rest? Of, if it was wood, wouldn't it match the rest of your fence? No, not as not as this is constructed. No, this this is solid, right? Yes. And your other fence has uh, how I forget how the other. It's the alternating inside outside. Uh, side. Right. Okay. Okay. What what's the finish on the fence, uh, Lance? Um, is it is it a matte finish or is it a shiny finish? What kind of it's finish? A shiny you finish. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the thoughts I had is that if it's unacceptable as is, it could be lightly sanded and painted white so that it would look it wouldn't look vital. Um, I'm just going to state my opinion, which is pretty obvious, I think, to most of you. Um, I think this is a real mistake if we were to allow this to happen. It's the first time we would ever be allowing vinyl fencing in the, in the historic district. It is in a very noticeable area because people do walk on that side street and would see it. Um, and I think it's a huge mistake. I think we should stick with the wood. We've also been happy to um, consider iron fencing in the past, other alternatives. Um, and this isn't a huge section of fencing. Um, so, I, I mean, I just don't see any reason to approve it and go against what we've done in the past. So, actually, I think a, a straight solid fence, the way you have it proposed, is probably more historic than the front and back fencing that you have the rest of. Right. So, if those, that, that part that's facing the street, not the type part that angles in, but that you can see from the street, was replaced with wood just the way you have it, I, I, I would think it would be acceptable. In other words, if you could just remove the wood or the vinyl facing this, that you can see from the street and then put in wood for that part, then that would be acceptable. The post could remain and everything else. So is there any problem with just putting a wood facade over the fence? As long as you can't see it, yeah. As long as you don't see the vinyl from the street, you can do anything you want. You I, can... I, I was going to make that suggestion, Jerry, that if you could put a some type of wood covering over that, it might be it might be easier. That's a good to... idea. Yeah, I don't know how it's attached. So. Well, let's define wood covering and what that's going to look like, please. If it's going to look like tip, a, a typical eight foot run of wood fencing, side to side without any um, gap in between or just very narrow that would be fine as long as the vinyl wasn't showing. But let's not just say any kind of wood to right. go on, no. on top of it. Well, I just want us to be very clear about this. Do you think you could work with that, Dr. Wilson? Well, we, yeah, I can. I mean, I'm just having trouble because the, the building on either side of my house are vinyl siding. <laughs> That's the irony of the situation. What's vinyl siding? Yeah, on both sides of my house, the, the buildings are vinyl siding. You have new construction on one side, and that was that was allowed to be. I, I don't know if it was vinyl or hardy plank. I can't remember the, from the time. Vinyl on both sides. Just saying, it's a little ironic. That's all. Well, that building is not a historic building. It's not an old building. It was new construction. Um, the one that is on the side street, I'm not, not on Main. I'm talking about Main Street either side of my house. It's regrettable. Yes, it is very regrettable that it is vinyl siding. So, so Lance, what, what do you propose to do with the, with what, what would, what would be a compromise that you would propose to do? How would you attach the planks? Well, I still don't understand why if, if it was sanded and painted so that it was just a painted fence, you wouldn't know whether, what it was, vinyl or wood. I'm not quite sure why that's, not acceptable. I don't, well, I don't know why I have to. I'll put a wood facade over it then. Do you, I, I don't know whether that would work. You, did the fence manufacturer say that it would work? Yeah, all you have to do is sand it to take the finish off and then you can put any a paint on it. I mean, I've never heard of being able to paint plastic because I, it's I've actually researched it for other projects. Hmm. 
I don't yeah, think I mean, that should be. Honestly, I haven't done the research, but I mean, I've tried to do it on some personal stuff around several houses I've owned to, to keep from having to toss older, you know, plastic furniture and, and, and siding. And I haven't been successful, but again, I'm not, I'm not sanding, aware. The sanding the surface first? Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't hold up well. I mean, I've tried it and I've done it. It, it looks good when you first do it, but it doesn't last long, at least in my experience. But again, it, what I did was probably nothing as, as significant as you're considering. Is there a recommendation? I recommend that we don't approve the, the uh, application as submitted. I would, I would recommend that, that the, um, the compromise of, of attaching wood facing and, and painted wood facing over the, the uh, vinyl that, that from the street would appear to be wood and over, over time would age naturally as wood would Dr. age. Wilson, are you will, if you're willing to amend your application, you can get her, probably could get it approved. Um, sure. I mean, if that's what it's going to take, then that's what I'll do. Okay. Can, I would support Joe's position on that. I think that's a that's a reasonable compromise. Okay. So, Joy, do you want to? Um, how would we do this? To, can we? We can't accept another motion until that one. Well, I'll withdraw my seconded. motion, and someone and someone else can put it. Yeah, up I'll, I'll I'll make a motion. Uh, if if we could ask uh, Dr. Wilson to uh, put an amendment to his his initial submission describing the you know the 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 width and the depth of, of the wood that's going to be attached over the existing vinyl and uh, and describe that it's going to be um, cover all, all the vinyl and, and appear to be wood from the, from the street side, then you know, I think it, we could do it. It would be wood. It doesn't appear it. to be wood. It would be wood. No, no, I meant, you know, you wouldn't be able to see any of the vinyl, previous vinyl. Right. That's, that's, that's what I meant. So it, as long as, you know, an amendment may be submitted directly to Jerry, we, we could well, probably he, we, we it, get it approved without it, having to wait for another meeting. If Dr. Wilson says that he's willing to apply the wood siding, uh, vertical siding, solid wood siding over the existing vinyl, then I think we could have a motion saying that okay. we'd approve well, the amend amendment to the... Uh, can we clarify this? It's not going to go over the, the vinyl. It's going to essentially be a wood panel in front of the vine, correct? Yeah. I mean, is that right. logistically how it would happen? It would be attached to the vinyl fence. I don't, I don't know if it would be a panel. It could be individual wood strips that are uh, wood board. Yeah, it would be screwed into the vinyl. Yeah. Okay. That's as I understood. And it's so, simple, okay. it's, it and it's simply vert just... vertical planking, basically okay. vertical wood planking. Yeah, it'll be three quarter inch treated probably. Yeah side by side with a cross, a three quarter inch cross uh, board at top and bottom. Right. Okay. Jerry, I wasn't aware that it, that it could be done verbally. I, and if that's the case, if that's appropriate, then I'm fine with that. And, you know, I think Dr. Wilson has a clear understanding of what we're looking for. And I, I would make a motion to accept that proposal. Yeah. And finalize it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll write up the, um, application or the uh, recommendation to borough council and i'll send it to everybody and i'll send it to borough and then they can send it to you dr wilson and then if that's okay then it'll be forwarded on to council okay in other words, it's a little hard to see this without it in writing so we'll um i'll work work up the uh, recommendation and pass it by the um yourself Okay. And well, I think Dr. Wilson should have a chance to see it as well, since we're... Well, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I'll send it okay. to Patricia. She'll send it on to Dr. Wilson. And okay. And if he says he's okay and we're all okay with it, then it can go on to council. Agreed. So are we, are we agreeing to this in concept pending your uh, written submission? Right. Correct. Okay. Obviously, we're going to do a vote. Yep. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so uh, I'll make up the uh, recommendation to council and pass it by Harb and you, Dr. Wilson. And if uh, it's okay with you, just let Patricia know when she sends it to you and it goes on to council. Okay, Please thank you. Thank you very much. 
Thanks, Next thank, up, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, next application is 7 West Afton Avenue. Tim, are you representing the applicant? I guess I am, yes. Or is you going to do it? I think, I, think, I think that my wife is going to help out with this one. I have to find her. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to sit with us? Okay. So I'm officially going to rec recuse, my, rec recuse myself here. Uh, Jerry? Yeah. So what do we have then? We have... Um, well, either any way you want to do it, just present what you're uh, proposing. Okay, that's fine. So, um, so you all have the, uh, the images of the sign. So mm -hmm. several years ago when we moved to the building, we, we placed the clock, our historic clock, onto the building. And, um, you know, we just, it really looks like it's barren up there, that it really needs something. And it originally had a sign underneath of it. So we uh, looked at a lot of different options of, of what signage on that building would be most appropriate for visibility and also aesthetics. <clears throat> Sorry to use that word, Jerry. <laughs> um, and color scheme, things like that, that would really uh, relay our, our, uh, our business reputation and style and, uh, and logo. So we placed the signage underneath the clock on a uh, wrought iron bracket. Um, there'll be some small uh, lighting above the sign very uh, low key. Um, and then we're proposing to remove the, what would be the freestanding sign in the front yard, which I think <clears throat> um, for us at least, but I think it, it seems very old fashioned and I think it obscures the, uh, the view of the building. So it's a, it's a simple change. And if you look at the sign, you'll see it has a small rectangular, a small square to the left hand corner of that. Um, that's a small logo that represents um, our hallmark and things that we place on our jewelry that we manufacture. Um, we're using that in our marketing now. That's going to be gold leaf, um, that part of the sign, and it's going to be carved. The letters are going to be carved. That gold leaf is going to match the gold leaf that's on the clock above it, so it kind of ties it together. Oh. Um, the rest of the sign is, um, is painted. So it's pretty simple, pretty flat. There's not a lot of molding details. It's a painted basic sign, about an inch and a half thick. And it's the sign material that everybody's using in town, um, which is kind of a composite that's then painted and sealed. Um, and it's, that's, that's basically it. Now, you'll notice this, there's a small directory sign um, that's, that's the small logo that's next to the door also. Um, that's kind of directional, so people understand that's where you're going to like enter the showroom. So, and the sign is 24 inches by 48 inches. So we didn't want it to project too far out beyond the clock itself. So it's not a real large sign. No, it's no. Not. but it, but its colors are really pretty with the building, and I think it will be really noticeable from West Afton and East Afton. So, and the. Um, signage that's in the yard being black is really people tell us that they can't even see it. It's a nice sign. Unfortunately, it's been deteriorating too. We've had to glue it back together about three mm -hmm. times. You know, I don't, I don't know why that's happening, but you know, so I have to talk to Ruth about that. <laughs> so, um, so in a nutshell, that, that's, that's basically it. Um, and I think there's a nice balance between the clock now and the signage and, um, and it and it uh, it has a nice proportion, I think. So we worked on that. So any questions for me about it? No, I have no questions. It it looks looks um, nice to me and, and and consistent with the rest of the science. It's already been improved downtown, so it looks good. Yep, I agree. Um, my comments are: Is that really orange? Uh, no. Orange and yellow, and I mean the colors that are shown there really don't look like they go with the colors of the house at all. Um, well, yeah, they really they really accent the uh, they really they're um, you know when when they get printed like that they're not that accurate. They're kind of our logo colors. They're kind of like a burnt orange, which is actually a nice accent color to the uh, but there's. 
the niello is really more like a gold, gold tone. So um, let me just share something here, share screen. Okay, here we go. Okay. Host disabled attendee screen. Uh, Jerry, can you um, click the button to share screen? I want to show you another image of this. You're getting good at this, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. It's impressive. Wow. All right, do you see that, everybody? No. Oh. oh. Uh, it's coming up now. Okay, right. There you go. Uh, and all I have is my screen. Yeah, yeah, if you can open up Tim's pictures, um, I think that'll, that'll do it huh. on your computer from your email. Few options. Okay. I take it back, Tim. Yeah, <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, you were able to do it the other night. You did it recently. You shared something. Um, it says host disabled attendee from screen sharing. That's what it's saying. Uh, um, it's, it's pretty much the same. Uh, it's pretty much the same image of what you have. It's just the colors are a little bit more true. Yeah. And you know, let's see. Yeah, see, it's there, but it's not. It's not I think Jerry has to open it on his PC and then it'll show up because we're seeing right. his desktop. At least I am. Okay, I have it up now. Very clear. If we can. Do you want to bother? Can you see it, Jerry? No. Yeah. Or Jerry, you should have an email that you can open up on your desktop. Um, if you open it up and then share the screen, we'll be able to see what you have on your screen. Are you talking to Tim or Jerry? Jerry. Uh, Jerry owns the screen right now. So I think he's. But I think it's something that... different that Tim wants to show us that wasn't in the email. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I thought he was just showing us the exhibits in the email. So. No, it, and it shows you a little bit of the carving on the on the uh, logo sign. So the so Jerry, the um, the colors are like a bronzy color for the letter itself. Um, there's a, like kind of a burnt orange that's very attractive for the for the building, and then it's kind of like a gold tone around the outside. It's certainly not yellow. It's not it's not brash, not circus like. Believe me. <laughs> and then the, then the small square logo is is all being done in gold leaf so that's the kind of the wow about the sign but the rest of the sign is pretty conservative in terms of design it's just very readable which is which is what we need to and uh, that's what's nice about having a real live person-to-person hard -person meeting rather than trying to do something on them um, yeah I can probably I'm have good. actual colors um, my my other comment is is that the sign is right in front of the roof of the uh, bay window and so it, it's fighting an architectural detail an important element to the building you see where how it's i mean you're looking i'm looking at the photograph bigger and you know you it's uh right below the clock and the in the I mean, between the clock and the sign, well, I mean, the sign is obscuring the uh, roof line. So I don't think that's very good. Well, I mean, this is preserve that. Well, it's, it's photoshopped in there. And um, once it tucks up underneath the clock, it'll be above that roof line. Um, it's just was very difficult to show you this when the Photoshop scenario. We obviously don't want the roof line to obscure the, the sign from West Afton Avenue. So, and if, if we don't have room to do that, we would actually move the clock up a little bit if we needed to, but I don't think we need to. And I think that the angle of the photograph here is kind of, um, is cheating what you're seeing because we, we, don't, we don't want that roof line to block the sign and it doesn't. But in this uh, Photoshop version, it kind of does. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it'll move up tighter to the clock. And for example, that wrought iron bracket's gonna be made to kind of tuck it up a little bit higher. So I, I see your suggestion and we will comply with that. We'll make sure that we're above that, that roof line for visibility as well as aesthetic. I also have a problem with the dimensions of the sign. I'd rather see something that's higher and less, instead of the 48 inches, I'd rather like to see something like, like 30 by uh, 40 or, or something like that. I think the proportions are, it's, it's just sort of, sticking way out there as opposed to being well know. again this is a photo, photoshop version of it 
I mean, we're, we're, we're proportional to the, to the size of the bracket on the clock above it, and we're not really coming out beyond the clock uh, any substantial amount. The proportion's better, I think, than it looks like here in the sample. So we, we played around with size quite a bit. I mean, we, you have to actually get up there and, and measure it out. You know, there's a very tall building in the front. So, I mean, you need something that's balanced with the, kind of the soaring facade of this building. So it's, uh, and you're also got to consider that you've got another element up there, which is the clock. Yeah. Um, was the clock ever approved by HARB? Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. It was. All right. Um, remember that whole discussion about internally lit and all that stuff? I remember. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I just, I, you know, we, we, we worked very hard on the, on the proportion of the sign so it looks right. And um, I, th I think when it's all said and done, it's going to look very balanced. So, you know, that's, 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 that's what we do. We, we're very careful about proportion and, and I think it's you know, going to be a nice addition to the building. Is there, I mean, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. Um, I'd like to see the actual colors, and I don't know how to get that to people other than, um, well, I mean, I'd like to be able to take the colors. I mean, you're saying they go well, but from what I'm looking at it, it doesn't feel comfortable at all. And, and I'd like to see an actual sample of the colors you know, color chip. Well, and art generally doesn't review color color schemes, and uh, correct. That, second, secondly, these are colors that reflect my logo, and um, right, they're, they're very compatible with the building, in, in 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 my opinion. So, well, I mean, and you have very very good taste. <laughs> There's no question about that. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, the building is very very subtle and quiet and conservative. So these are kind of what we call punch colors. You know, they're, they're not super bright, but they're just, they're just in, intended to complement the rest of the building. And um, we were originally even thinking about painting some of the, some of the doors, um, which we, you know, we went, we, the doors wound up being natural wood, but originally this punch color, this burnt kind of orange color was to be our door color, you know, to give it kind of real well. But we, we decided not to do that. But, and um, I, I, you know, I, like I said, I have another visual here, but I mean, I think it's very similar to what you, what you have. Well, so, I, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with the uh, proportions of the sign. And I, when I looked at the clock out there, I thought there wasn't a whole lot of space between the clock and the roof. So you'd have to move the clock up. And so I, somehow I just like to see more uh, the proportions and the, you know, adjustment if the clock moves up and, you know, be able to stand out there with the colors. Is there a way you could put the colors up on the side of the building? Or in the window? Or, or in the window, yeah. Um, so you could actually see the actual colors. I thought Corb wasn't reviewing colors. I agree. We, uh, that's really not our purview. So I wouldn't, I, I don't see how we can hold this up for color. Right. And what, what's, Joy, what's your, what's your point of view, and Joe, what's your point of view on the proportions of this sign? And um, I think you all heard my, my take on the, the, uh, the roof line of the bay window not being interrupted. I'm, I'm explaining that, you know, it's very hard to take an angle of this building, <clears throat> Photoshop it, and have it look like it's in perfect proportion. But yeah, so, I, I agree, Tim. I agree, Tim. And, and obviously, your 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 business has a skill of, of proportion and and design. So I I don't know if we have an, an ability to um, to trust your judgment, which is you know it's different from somebody somebody who's got some artistic talent here, and 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 this is sort of an expertise of yours. I, I'd be comfortable with your description, and I understand how challenging it is to to see an accurate depiction on Photoshop. So given that we're not we're not going to really take charge of the colors and that that you know we're reasonably confident that you're um, an expert on proportion and, and design, I mean your 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 explanation of what you plan to do sounds reasonable to me anyway. Well, 
Yeah, and, and I'm I'm going to say we're not going to obscure the sign by the by the by the bay bay window roof. We're not so going to. Would you that. say that the sign bottom of the sign would be above the uh, bay window roof? Yes, it will. Yeah, yeah, it has to be. So it's not blocked. Yeah, one way or another. So could we, so. Could we uh, include that in the recommendation? Uh, well, we intend to do that, so it's, it's so it wouldn't going. be a problem because there's no dimensions on, on its location. Normally, we ask the dimensions on the building and all that stuff, but that's a good barometer, you know, to say that right. you know, it's above the roof line of the. Yeah, well, it, a lot of that has to do. If you look carefully at the illustration too, a lot of that has to do with the with the bracket. So the bracket right now is taking up several feet that really should be, that bracket should probably be a lot smaller or simpler. So the well, sign I'm can just, move up. I'm just saying that we could just say, what, whatever the bracket is, I can't even see the bracket, um, would be, I, yes, I can see it, sorry. What's the same? I'm just saying that it would be above the roof line. Recommendation says that the bottom of the sign is above the roof line. Yeah. yeah. That's what you have to it's, say. A, it's okay to have in the recommendation that the bottom of the sign is above the bay roof line. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, fine. So. It's a good suggestion, Jerry, and it sounds like Tim and, and, and Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Foster is, are, are okay with that. So. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah. New member. Okay, so um, I'm going to vote to deny, but it looks like we have two members who will support it, so it shouldn't be a problem. But uh, Dawn, I'm sorry. Do you have comments? Uh, Sorry, I missed you. No, no, I, I can't see anything, <laughs> but um, <All> right. <laughs> I, I do know that what um, Tim usually does is very classy, and um, I understand what he's talking about with the punch colors, um, and, uh, and um, they usually do use things like the, the oranges and um, as a little highlight on, on something, but, um, but I really, you know, I can't comment because I'm not really seeing anything. <laughs> So, so anyway, so is there a recommendation? I'll uh, make a recommendation that we approve the application with the proviso that um, we make the adjustment on hang the hanging of the sign to not obscure that roof line. Or That's to be above the roof line. Right. Which it is. Second it. All right, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Okay. It's approved. So I'll write up the recommendation and uh, send it out to everybody and uh, send it on to council. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joy. Thank Good you. to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. Okay. So, um, okay. So, all right. Everybody got the um, uh, oh, yeah. Museum Commission's. Information. Yeah. So. yeah, I get it. I, I I got it. I apologize. I haven't had a chance to go through it yet. No, no, no. <laughs> you just got it today. <laughs> so, so I can read fast. And, um, I just noticed it before the meeting. Before, so. so anyway, but I think I okay. need to do a review of myself. So I'm sharing it. Um, no, Jerry, I thought it was a good idea to send it out. Yeah, it a great idea. And and hopefully council will get to review it also. Um, yes. Yeah. So, so, so Jerry, I have it. I, I mean, I can't share it because I couldn't share the photograph. So, um, is there a section? I mean, there's so many pages in there. Is, th is there like a highlighted section you would like us to concentrate on when we read that? I really haven't looked at it either. I, I do have my uh, special consultant that I recommend that I uh, get this. So uh, I bet. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I sort of skipped a little it. Rusty on it myself. I right. skimmed it, and if you you go through it, um, you'll you'll find the sections that are applicable to what we what we need to be mindful of. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, good. Yeah, you'll see because it's it's got section it. headers on the organization of Harb, and but then it talks about the meaty stuff, the stuff, the controversial stuff that we're well, always dealing with. Yeah, I went through like the first thirty pages, and a lot of it was about setting up a historic district right. and all the things that are wonderful. Yeah, skip all that. Skip all that. I just that. thought maybe yeah. Jerry had a, a you know a couple pages he wanted to highlight, and you know if you do, Jerry, maybe let us know. Like you know if you've got some sections right. that we should really concentrate on too, that would be helpful. Right. And do you want us to try to um, give you some feedback on that maybe next meeting? Would that be good? Sure. I, I think I don't know if there's feedback. It's just. Um, 
you know, unless you disagree with uh, what it's not Mich Michelle with Feb. Joy, you remember him? Oh yes. He's he's the one who wrote it. So right. <laughs> So, you know, unless there's something that you think the army should be different than what's proposed, I think it's just informative to uh, get everybody up on the same page. So. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. And your goal, your goal really is to make sure that we're uh, staying on, on task, on theme, oh. like um, making sure that we're, we're voting for things that are appropriate for the district rather than necessarily the aesthetics, to use your words, right? Yeah. Um, also, there's a uh, historic preservation briefs on uh, restoring windows and restoring siding and masonry yeah. and all that. And I think you can probably get those online also. Okay. So if there is ever a, a question on a, a material, you know, there's why materials fail and how to correct it. And so there's really good briefs on that. It's historic preservation trust, I think, puts them out. Okay. Well, I think tonight's example of vinyl fences, fencing versus wood fencing, if right. you use that and read through um, the guidelines as a way to, to back up why we want to maintain wood fencing within the historic district, yeah. right. you know, I think it'll be helpful. Yeah. The one thing on that, um, other than I think as Joe said, I've never heard of being able to sand and paint plastic and have it hold. No. But um, um, besides that, the fence that he had up there before is definitely not historic. I've never seen a front and back lap as a historic fence. Um, so yeah. in a way, you know, we were re he was replacing something that's not historic. So it's really, it's more about the material and bringing something in that would be historic. Yeah, I agree. Or, or keeping with the character of the building. Um, so anyway, but, but I mean, a lot of times what we want to do is if there's something historic, we want to preserve it. If it's not historic, then, you know, they have a lot more leeway about what they can do. Except that if we're talking about historic property yeah. that may have had something done that was not historic to it, like a chain link fence put up in the sixties, for example, no, prior to... I agree. Right. I'm just saying well, that overall, right. he has a better case with replacing a non-conforming fence with another non-conforming fence than if it was really a historic-looking fence that you know should have been replicated. It's just. You know. But it's not an excuse for allowing vinyl, Jerry. I'm not making it an excuse for allowing vinyl. All right. Vinyl. All right. I just vinyl. want to be clear about that. Heck, I mean, I was about ready to hook it up to my car and drag it down, but other than that, I figured you could have it <laughs> no, done no, no. first. No, no, no. It's a pretty historically unchanged building, even though it's That's in right. the That's Well, it is changed. The entire front porch is well, that Well, that needs to be put back someday, you know, I would think. <laughs> well, I, I don't think it's never It's never been sided with vinyl. It's, it's not been... Right, wood, exactly. Wood, 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 or or vinyl or aluminum. It's paint bed. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think we should continue to, I just don't think this is necessary, but. No. Yeah. So okay. is there anything else for the um, hard meeting? Yeah, yeah. I have one, one quick question, if, if, yeah. if everybody has a second. Um, it's kind of like a combination of, of a, a couple of the meetings. And after I realized that uh, Dr. Wilson had, had, you know, again, with all good intentions, had probably um, decided to ask forgiveness and not permission uh, with the fence, you know, by putting up the vinyl and then submitting it a request to, to approve the vinyl. Do we think that all the property holders within the historic district understand that a change like a fence like that or, or a sign, obviously uh, Tim understands the need to get permission and not forgiveness. Is, is it worth maybe a, some sort of communication, an email or even a, a letter to all the property owners saying, you know, we're, we're welcome to your proposals to, to make adjustments to the property please submit them in advance rather than after the work is done? Because if we were to end up in the situation, obviously Dr. Wilson was very understanding and willing to work with us and entertain a significant adjustment to his original work. If we had ended up in that same situation with a previous homeowner, like the stained glass window, if, if, if it had been installed and then we were trying to 
negotiate its removal, it might have been somewhat more difficult. So is that, is that worth thinking about, Jerry? Um, my thought is that people are very aware in the historical oh, aspect of their obligations. And I think that a number of people just say, hey, you know, I'll do it and then I'll change it first and then get caught. Same thing for building permits. People know they have to have building permits and they yeah. go ahead and do things. Okay, it was and, just a suggestion. Uh, if you don't think it's necessary, that's fine. Joy, what do you think? Well, I think that over time, I mean, I think that there's a, a myriad of things going on. It never hurts to give reminders to people and maybe that, we've talked about this before, putting something in the newsletter, you know, that goes out to the community about yeah. about what what needs to be, what you need to do within the historic district, when you, what triggers needing to come to HARB. So that's always useful. And then, you know, there are, there are new people that move into town that can claim ignorance maybe, that they don't know what the rules are. Um, but I think most long-term residents know. Um, and as Jerry said, some people try to get away with it, just as they try to avoid getting a permit outside of the historic district when they need a building permit. So, I mean, you have all kinds of things. It never hurts to um, re-educate and alert folks to what they need to do. That would be my opinion about that. And, and I think the newsletter write, is a great way to do it. The newsletter like to write something to the gardening newsletter. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great. Anything that to, to no, avoid. I'm, I'm no. asking for a volunteer to write something for the gardening <laughs> newsletter. <laughs> hey, Joe, how about you? Can I? Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll take a crack at it. Um, and, can I know. weigh in on this? Sure, Dawn. Can I, um, I think it's a very important point. That's that's one of the reasons I I called in, is that. I noticed um, that um, some of the, especially with the property that was discussed at the council meeting, there's changes that are being done, substantial changes, that the porch was just jackhammered off um, the original porch. And I don't know if you just deal with facade. I mean, there's structural changes. And I know part of it has to do with permits, which uh, and other parts have to do with HARB, but there is there is something in place already with the permits. It, it's called fines, um, and um, I just think that when certainly not people who aren't doing it intentionally, but I think if it's a serial offender, that um, at some point, you know, you can't once something's gone, it's gone. You know, like once once an original part of the building is gone, it's gone. And that's sort of what's happened with, with the construction that I've noticed on that property. Um, other people are very responsible. And um, I don't know, what you know, you what your authority about? is. What port are you talking about which, in the back? The, um, which property? The one at, um, no, no, I think it's 70. 70 South. You're talking about 70 South. Main, right? Yes, yes. What what portion? There was just there was just two days ago. Um, the original porch um, that was on the back was just completely destroyed. Um, and I don't know. See again, it's like I don't know. I don't know exactly if Harb just does facades or if you deal with interior. I don't know how much you deal with. The interior has definitely been completely redone, comp structure, everything. And, um, you know, I, I don't have, know. We don't have any control over the interior. It's only and we don't, by the public right of way. Right. Um, and, and we don't police things either. I mean, that's an issue in town altogether with all kinds of permits, whether it's within the historic district or not. Um, so that's not our, under our purview. And I don't feel comfortable about us discussing any particular pro uh, property um, individually at this meeting. It's not appropriate because we well, have we don't have anything before us about that. Yeah, and, but okay. I can go, I do have photographs of the entire building. And if the back porch was taken down, if the plan- Jerry, I don't think that's for us to discuss here tonight. I don't think it's, it's our responsibility at this point. Um, I mean, if that's, if something has been done, then it needs to be investigated by council. You know, or the, or people in, at Borough Hall, but I don't think that's for us to discuss have, at this meeting. 
I have a suggestion for Dawn very simply, and that's to maybe go down and let Paula be aware of your concerns and let Paula put that through the motions. Say that right. you observe something Dawn, that you, you're that you you not sure was right and you'd like to bring that to Paula's attention and she could bring it to a, an enforcement officer or the council or whatever would be appropriate. I think that's the way to handle it. Oh, that. okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, so and thank, thank you for keeping an eye on things. That's good. Yep. One of the things that we don't have is a historic building inspector. And I don't know who that falls under, but you know, that is one of the positions. That is a position that we always thought the zoning officer was, but uh, there, there's a position for a historic building inspector. Mm. And we haven't filled that. Right. So that's something to think about. Okay. Well, I thought council was supposedly advertising or looking for people to um, come on board hard because we have openings. So that's yeah, part of that. But I'm just saying that. Um, yes, in terms of. Right. Hey, Dawn, what are you doing with your spare time? <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't know you had an opening. I really didn't. Um, I should, um, you know, I actually, my, I have my original background was in architecture of sent you know a lifetime ago but um you know my love is historic homes wow. so yeah maybe i will submit <laughs> i should submit it one vacancy cherry or oh well joy is saying we have a vacancy on har har right but there's a position for historic building inspector which is separate well separate but part of har yeah right and that probably requires very specific types of credentials, I'm sure. Um, Actually, that booklet that we're all supposed to be reading, it should be in there. All right, we'll right. Take, exactly. take a and discuss and it in the meeting, so, yeah. Dawn, uh, if you ask um, Paula um, Oops. to get a copy of that, she can uh, send you the link. Oh, okay. It's it's put out okay. by the uh, Pennsylvania Museum and PHMC Historic Commission. And uh, what is it, about 80 pages? Yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, it's downloaded on, and I sent it to everybody today. So, uh, including Council and Paula. And so if you ask Paula, she should be able to send that to you and you can look at that and see what CARB is all about. Oh, okay. Thank you. What What is the title of it again? Um, it, I'll just I'll just tell her the the document that came from Harp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's from It's from the uh, Pennsylvania Historic Museum Historic Museum mm -hmm. Commission. Okay. So it's, it's from Harrisburg. It's an official document. So. Okay. Good. All Sounds right. good. So are we adjourning <laughs> yeah. now, Jerry? Are we all done? Anything else? Not for me. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll get those uh, applications yeah. out. Okay. Okay. Great. Very good. All right. Have a nice uh, weekend, everyone. Thanks for everybody's thanks. help. Take care. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good night. Bye. 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 Oh my.